dance and do what you feel like. The Dance Hall Dance Association, DDA, is a collective group that aims to develop and educate its members on best practices related to their art and their business. And joining us this morning to share the details of this newly formed association, choreograph choreographer and lecturer at the Edna Manley College for the Visual and Performing Arts, Maria Hitchens, and founder of Artistic Founder and Norman. Founder and artistic director. I knew something was wrong. We'll catch the vibes. Uh, production Mikhail uh, Morris is also here. Good morning to you both. Thank you for being Good here morning. and for sticking around while I got that intro right. Um, <laughs> it's good to see an association like this finally formed. I'm going to go ladies first. Maria, catalyst behind this. Why? Why no? Well, why not? No, I mean, this has been long coming. Many persons have tried to get dance hall dancers together as one unit. And so we decided, especially during the pandemic, where a lot of the dancers have a little bit of downtime, it was much easier to get us all on one accord. And of course, there is reason for us to be organized, you know, to develop our own affairs and to act as one body. I want to tell you that there are people who, who may be watching who are saying, you know, dance hall dancers dance. Like, why would they need an association to lobby, to, you know, advocate to, why, you know? Um, because many people still don't see this as like a formal occupation, income earner, and look at it and give it the respect um, it deserves. Why would what would you say to folks like that, Mikhail? Let me ask you. And that is the important thing because people, majority of the people don't see it as uncurry. And that is why it's so important to have an association. Because we as the dance artists, as our practitioners, we see this as a livelihood because people like the dancers of Jamaica, we 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 work hard, we train, we we, we try to master our craft, and that's one of the reasons why we create an association because we feel unappreciated, and it's really important for the association to really create an entity and body so that people see that our job is really important and yeah. supposed to be yes. Yeah, Maria, what kind of respect is placed on dance or no? What's happening at Edna? Um, do you find a lot of students in interested in that dance form and looking to make a career out of it? Well, certainly, I mean, Edna Man in terms of the School of Dance has existed for years and has churned out, you know, professional dancers at the highest level. For dancers specifically, uh, we have a course there running about five years now. And so that will tell you that the respectability for dance or dance as a genre certainly is increasing when you see academia is taking it on. And so the business of dance continues even during the pandemic. So even for us as an association, recently we hosted an event which we titled the Dance Hall Independence Week. It was four days featuring 45 Jamaican dancers who taught classes largely curated to an online audience. And let me tell you, Simone, we had well over 100 participants online. Can imagine, can imagine. And there are people who make good livings off of this and who do it internationally, like travel the world. And not to mention that there are many international folks who are looking at what we're doing so they can replicate it. So we understand why the industry is there because um, you folks are doing a fantastic job. So you're advocating for the needs of dance hall dancers. You're establishing a credible body to oversee media relations. You're educating members on best practices in areas related to their art. And you're organizing a cohesive approach to industry issues and to improve collective desired outcomes. So those are the four boxes or pillars that I see that you've set up. When you say advocating for the needs of dance hall dancers, Maria, um, Mikhail, what are some of the things that would fall under that as immediate um, needs, desires for this association to lobby for? Okay, so the, the association, especially for the creating job opportunity, because now we are looking at uh, not just the dancers to only have that skill set, but also have a business mind. 
So the association will create that opportunity to, because what we normally do now is we are having a meeting every month where we have guest, um, pra guest uh, practitioners or people who are in the field of marketing and branding to have that to share those experiences with the dancers to 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 say hey there's opportunities and this is how you can go about it to brand and how to market yourself so that's one of the needs where we are creating uh, the, the, the 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 space for for these dancers to showcase their talent mm -hmm. and to that when you say in terms of dance hall is international yes it is but also Showing, showing, showing the dancer that um, because for me I'm also a dance lecturer at the Simon Fraser University in Canada, where I teach a two-credit course, and it's 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 it's, it's theory and practical. So just to share also my experience that dance art can also be in, in can be also in an institution. Of course. Inter yes. Of course, and to create networking opportunities because you're doing that, Mikhail. But there are so yeah. many opportunities for other people to do things like that across yeah. the world. I mean, as far away as Russia, as I understand it, where dance hall apparently is a very big thing. Um, yeah. So, Maria, where do we go in terms of next steps? So, you had that event in August, 3 to 6 Dance Hall Independence Week, um, dance lectures and so on. So, you've done that. What are the next steps in terms of how you folks plan to ramp up and build out this association? When next we plan to organize events specifically now to benefit our members. So we're looking at creating professional ID for the members. We're looking at doing professional photo shoots because a lot of times you may get media engagements, you may get bookings, and dancers are scrambling yep. for you know high resolution you know photos or even in developing their show reels that they can use to audition for major gigs. So those are some of the activities we're looking to do as soon as the lockdown situation has changed. And Maria, what kind of buy-in have you been getting from the dance hall dancing community? Because um, if you don't get the buy-in, then what's the purpose of the association, right? I hear like 200 people have already registered and more every week you're getting more interest. Absolutely. Of course, we are engaged a lot on social media. That's the place to be. So anybody who wants to join, simply drop us a DM at Dance Hall Dance Association on Gmail. They can also hit us up at Dance Hall Dance Association Instagram as well. We have well over 200. As Mikhail said, we have meetings via Zoom every other Sunday. And we also have WhatsApp groups where we keep in touch on a daily basis, celebrating each other's successes and navigating the challenges. And do you have, Mikhail, like... Many of the dancers who we would have read about, I've heard about the established dancers and the, um, the newer ones who are making waves. Are they showing an interest in being a part of this as well? Yes, they are showing an interest. And that's, that's, the, that's the next thing where I really love about this um, association because we are now start coming together as a, as a community because that's the important thing for us to have these conversations and share our different experiences. And it's 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 a great it's a great it's a great feeling to know that you know we are actually you know sharing these experiences and just um, you know looking forward to like the, the future endeavors of how we can really um, make this association stronger together as as a, as a union. Yeah. So Maria, what does your governance look like now? You have a a chair or a. <laughs> Well, to be honest, we have not formalized specific roles yet, but we have a seven-member core team that consists of myself, Mikhail, Latonia Styles, Kimiko from Versatile One, Pancho from Team Cautions, Wayne from Fantastic Steppers, Zidane from Exclusive Dancers. And what we tend to do is we gather the feedback from the larger group and then we come together as a core and work out and execute the details. And just to say that we do have the support of veterans such as Dance of Queen Carleen, we have John Hype, um, Shanka Deep, we have Orville. Yes, and I was waiting for you to call Orville's name. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So yes. we have those who have made it, those who are upcoming. We have the dancehall crews and the individual dancers who are, of course, trying to make their name as well. Fantastic. I mean, uh, easy one, one, two, or one, three, as we say in dance hall for the folks who are looking for dancers can just come to the DDA. I mean, just to have that unit that represents, um, the, you know, all the dance hall stakeholders is going to be so fantastic um, for you guys and should really help to kind of, you know, build build the, the image. Not that it needs yes. any building, because it should happen a long time. I can imagine people like Dr. Son Sonia Stanley Naya saying, finally, you know, because this is this is really a cultural thing, and this is the best of of who we are, and we ought to treat it um, in the way that it deserves. We're gonna we're gonna go dance hall dance association on IG, and at Gmail is where you will find these folks. We wish you all the best, ladies and gentlemen, as you build out this organization. Thanks for linking with us this morning. Thank you so much for having us. No and problem. Come on, dancers across Jamaica, join us. We need the support. All right, choreographer and lecturer at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts, Maria Hitchens, and founder and artistic director of Catch the Vibes production company, Mikhail Morris. Coming up next, we hear.